Good morning and welcome, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, to the Eucharistic celebration of the second Sunday in Ordinary Time. In today's Mass, we listen to God's call to each one of us to discipleship. The readings focus on the need for us to be open to God's ongoing call and our willingness to accept His invitation to follow Him and proclaim the good news by our lives. We praise and thank God for the grace to be counted as His disciples of hope, and we pray for the perseverance and the fortitude to carry out our mission of leading others to Jesus with joy and love. Longing for light, we wait in darkness. Longing for truth, we turn to you. Make us our own, your holy people. Light for the world to see. Christ, be our light. Shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ, be our light, shine in your church, gathered today. Longing for peace, our world is troubled. Longing for hope, many despair. Your word alone has power to save us, make us a living voice. Christ, be our light, shine in our hearts, shine through the dark. Christ, be our light, shine in your church, gathered today. Our entrance antiphon. All the earth shall bow down before you, O God. And shall sing to you, shall sing to your name, O God Most High. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you and with your spirit. Welcome, dear friends, brothers and sisters, to this celebration of praise and thanksgiving. Dear friends, though we are at the Movement Control Order, the MCO, we are grateful to God. We are thankful for the ability to come together via live streaming, to be connected with one another in faith and with God. So dear friends, brothers and sisters, this Sunday you'll find the invitation of Jesus is to follow him. It's a journey towards discipleship. A disciple of Jesus is always open to that call, is always willing to follow him, even though the journey could be difficult. And today, Jesus calls each one of us to come and see, to be with him, to enter into his life, to be able to enjoy his companionship. By doing so, we truly become his disciple, a disciple that is on mission. And for the times we fail, dear friends, brothers and sisters, for the times we have taken our call for granted, the invitation of Jesus to follow him, let us turn to him and seek forgiveness and mercy. Together we say, 
I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I fail to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Mm -hmm. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy Glory to God in the highest And on earth peace to people of good will We praise you, we bless you We adore you, we glorify you We give you thanks for your great glory Lord God Heavenly King, O oh God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on earth. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on earth, for you alone are the Holy One. You Lord, are the Lord, you alone are the most high. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who govern all things, both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Mm -hmm. A, re a reading from the first book of Samuel. In those days, Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call lie down again. So he went and lay down. And the Lord called again, Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, 
Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call. My son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord has not yet been revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. And he arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. And the Lord came and stood, calling as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant hears. And Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and let none of his words fall to the ground. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. I waited, I waited for the Lord, and he stooped down to me. He heard my cry He put a new song into my mouth Praise of our God Here I am, Lord I come to do your will You do not ask for sacrifice and offering but an open ear You do not ask for holocaust and victim Instead, here am I Here I am, Lord I come to do your will in the scroll of the book it stands written That I should do your will My God, I delight in your law In the depth of my heart Here I am, Lord I come to do your will your justice I have proclaimed In the great assembly My lips I have not sealed You know it, Lord Here I am, Lord I come to do your will here I am, Lord, I come to do your will.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brethren, the body is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord and will also raise us up by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? But he who is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Flee from sexual immorality. Every one sin, every other sin a person commits is outside the body. But the sexually immoral person sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God. You are not your own, for you are bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Your servant is listening. You have the message of eternal life. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to john glory to you o lord as john stood with the two of his disciples jesus passed and john stared hard at him and said look there is the lamb of god hearing this the two disciples followed Jesus. Jesus turned round, saw them following, and said, What do you want? They answered, Rabbi, which means teacher, where do you live? Come and see, he replied. So they went and saw where he lived, and stayed with him the rest of that day. It was about the tenth hour. One of these two who became followers of Jesus, after hearing what John had said, was Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter. Early next morning, Andrew met his brother and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which means the Christ. And he took Simon to Jesus. Jesus looked hard at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, meaning rock. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear friends, brothers and sisters, it's a beautiful reading for this Sunday, a beautiful gospel proclamation. They are rich, meaningful, and profound insight for all of us to take back. You find in the gospel, dear friends, today, John the Baptist told his two disciples about Jesus. Look, there is the Lamb of God. At once, they began following Jesus. And when Jesus saw them, he asked them, What are you looking for? At first, 
It may look like a simple question, dear friends, but actually it is a profound and challenging one. It invites the disciples to look deeply into themselves and to evaluate the direction and the meaning of their lives. Obviously, the two disciples did not get the full implication of the question because they replied with another question, Rabbi, where are you staying? The rabbi during the time of Jesus, dear friends, was unlike the rabbi of today, who teaches mainly in the synagogues. Back then, during the time of Jesus, the rabbi was an itinerant preacher, much like the prophets of old. He moves from place to place, teaching about scriptures and many important lessons from concrete realities of life. His disciples follow him wherever he goes. They imbibe his philosophy, the way of life in the process. So dear friends, to ask where a rabbi lives, as the disciples ask Jesus, is rather secondary or even immaterial. What really matters is being with him wherever he goes. And this is why instead of answering their question, you find Jesus replies with an invitation, come and you will see. It is an invitation not to a place of a board, but to a relationship to be part of his life. So dear friends, when we see these disciples, they went and they saw where he was staying and they stayed with him for that day. What is interesting is that one day experience with Jesus inspired them so much that it radically transformed them from being followers to being evangelizers. One of them, Andrew, looks for his brother, Simon, and eagerly breaks the good news to him. We have found the Messiah. Every day, dear friends, if we look deep in our lives, the Lord invites each one of us and he tells each one of us, come, follow me. Like the two disciples, many of us would readily follow him, knowing that he is the Messiah. But he would invariably pose the same question to each one of us, what are you looking for? Dear friends, people follow Jesus for various reasons, depending on one's idea about him. As the great spiritual writer says, Thomas Merton, he says, our idea of God tells us more about ourselves than about God. This has been adequately shown in the gospel stories, in the many instances of life, dear friends. Many see him as a great healer, and so they follow him in order to be healed of their various ailments. Others would acknowledge him as the one who teaches with authority, so they follow him because they like to listen to his teaching. But still others admire him as the miracle worker, and they want to witness his miracles. And some, like the Pharisees, consider him as enemy and threat to their authority and status. So they follow him to catch him in his speech and to have something to accuse him of. Dear friends, this Sunday, therefore, Jesus asks each one of us, what are you looking for? In other words, he wants to know why we are following him. This is a crucial question that has to be answered honestly in order to purify our motivations and to intensify our commitment to follow Jesus. Peter accurately responded, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of everlasting life. Yes, dear friends, brothers and sisters, if we look into our own circumstances, 
It is really exciting to receive an invitation of every kind. We receive invitation through emails. We in, we receive invitation through phone calls, WhatsApps, so on and so forth. But when we are invited to share in special occasions, we feel welcome. We feel that we should embrace the intimate moments with those who are around. And we read about Jesus. He offered the most personal invitation to humanity. That is himself. Jesus did not turn crowds or individuals away. Far from being the life and soul of the party, Jesus was interested in those who came in contact with him. He met the deepest longings of the human heart. And he continues to do so even today to each one of us in various stages, chapters and pages of life. Dear friends, we are invited into a relationship with God. But it is up to us, to each one of us, to accept or not this invitation. As we read the first chapter of the Gospel of John today, we can see how this invitation of Jesus impacted the lives of the early disciples and how it can matter for each one of us today. So come and see Jesus for yourself is the starting point of knowing Jesus. It's the starting point of being a disciple to come and see. Yes, dear brothers and sisters, when something out of the ordinary grabs our attention, we want to know, don't we? If we see a crowd of people gathering around something, we want to know what's going on. If we're slowly making our way through traffic and we're getting nearer to an incident, we crane our necks to try to get a clearer look. This must be the same with Jesus, dear friends, brothers and sisters. We have heard enough of his stories. We have heard enough of the experiences of Jesus. But are we making efforts to come and see him personally? John the Baptist had his disciples who followed him in his teaching, but when Jesus passed by, John the Baptist said, look, the Lamb of God. Imagine, dear friends, the heads of these disciples turning trying to catch a glimpse of this man, Jesus. The message was enough for the two of John's disciples to begin to follow behind Jesus. There are great opportunities, dear friends, to meet Jesus in and through our human conditions, in our human experiences of life. We just need to take that one step to go and see Jesus. It's not about Jesus coming to us always, but it's about we going to see him. You find, dear friends, the second beautiful thing in that process that happened in the dialogue between Jesus and the two disciples is unique and important in our relationship with Jesus. When Jesus saw they were following him, he turned around and asked them, what do you want? This question should make us stop and think, what is our motive in following Jesus? We may have several answers this, to these questions for Jesus, the wanting to follow him. But for Jesus, the wanting to follow him, the wanting to be with him, is not going to be easy for anyone, including the disciples. Because that call to come and see denotes to deny oneself, to take up the cross, and to follow him. It is not easy road for the two disciples either to follow. It's a small gate, and it could be a narrow road, but if you see what happens, it will lead to life. Dear friends, the disciples did not answer to the question of Jesus, what do you want? 
but responded with the question, where do you live? That response that came from the disciples seems to tell us they wanted to know him. They hoped for an opportunity to be given to them, to follow him, to discover him, and to learn from him, and to do just that. It tells each one of us, dear friends, if we are followers and if we consider ourselves to be disciples, we are also invited to follow, to discover and to learn from him. Will he, perm will he permit us to follow? Definitely, just like the two disciples who came when there is a sincere heart and faithfulness in wanting to follow, Definitely, Jesus will give us an opportunity to do so. What an opportunity. What an opportunity to enter into his heart, to enter into his life, as he enters into our hearts, into our lives, to be in relationship. Dear friends, the next message that you could find from the gospel is that it tells about Jesus when you go about meeting him. The episode tells that when you meet Jesus and encounter Jesus, you tell others about that experience. The first thing that you find Andrew did was to find his brother, to look for his brother, to tell him that they found the Messiah. It's wonderful that this was his first response in encountering Jesus. He chose to tell someone close to him. Like any news, dear friends, brothers and sisters, when we receive, we look to tell those who are closest to us first. We want them to celebrate with us or come alongside with us through our experiences. When we meet Jesus, it is an excellent starting point for telling others about him. Are we being transformed? As we are being transformed, then you find we get excited in telling the story that changed our life, that brought hope to our hearts. Dear friends, brothers and sisters, you find when these disciples met Jesus, there was also what we call life is being given. You find Andrew in the gospel just not just talk the talk or just told stories. When we have experienced something, we want to bring that person to meet that person or that experience. And you find Andrew did that. He did not talk the talk, but he walked his brother to Jesus. It's like saying, don't take my word for it. Let me show you. What a beautiful picture of coming alongside someone and going on a journey with them to see Jesus for themselves. Dear friends, we sometimes timidly invite families. It is true. We invite friends or neighbors to Christmas and Easter services or other activities that are being held in church and hoping that they will catch a glimpse of Jesus. But why wait until those moments? We know that Jesus is with us by the power of the Holy Spirit. And each time, each time we act with hospitality, each time we act in love and compassion for others, dear friends, you'll find, you'll find Jesus becomes visible. He becomes present. And this is what happened to Andrew. He brought his brother and showed. Let's be able to show Jesus, just like these two disciples, excited with the story and brought others to meet Jesus. The final thing is that Jesus gives new life, new life whenever we meet him. But what is interesting is that there is great change. There is great conviction. There is great commitment in Jesus. When Andrew brought his brother Simon to Jesus, he was given a new name, Cephas, which translated Peter. Peter would simply mean rock, and he would go to be the foundational rock in the early church. 
and his faith in Jesus was important to spread the good news to everyone. So there is a mission. There will be a commitment. There will be a responsibility that follows each time we encounter Jesus. So dear friends, brothers and sisters, let us today, as we have listened to this gospel reading, this beautiful Sunday tells each one of us to move towards Jesus, to look for Jesus, to stay with him, to tell the story of him and be true missionary disciples of Jesus to the world, to the community and to our families. Where do you stay, Rabbi? Come and see will be the reply of Jesus to all of us today. Would you want to follow Jesus? So dear friends, brothers and sisters, the invitation of Jesus is to come and see. Coming and seeing simply would mean to be with him, to learn from him, and to be disciples of the Lord, to be able to profess the faith we have in him. So once again, let us profess this beautiful faith that we have been blessed with. Together we say, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, I believe in the one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dear friends, with all the intentions that are being offered at this Mass, let's open our hearts, let's bring the intentions that we have in our hearts to the Lord at this Eucharist. I ask you, dear friends, especially to pray, to pray for your family, the members of your family, the difficulty that you're going through, the challenges that you're going through with one another within family life. Open your family to the Lord. Bring your family to encounter Jesus. Take a little time now to pray for forgiveness, to pray for unity, to pray for compassion, to pray that we will be united in the name of the Lord. Pray for your family now. Secondly, dear friends, I ask you in a special way now 
to pray for someone, someone who is struggling with life, someone who is feeling lonely, someone who is being challenged in many ways during this pandemic moment. Let's remember this person. Let's bring him to the Lord at this Eucharist, offering him or her to the Lord so that the Lord may grant hope, peace, blessings and grace. Let's pray for the person, one person that you need to pray. Remember him or her now. And lastly, dear friends, I ask you to pray for yourself. We are all vulnerable people. We need God in order to move and live our lives. Let's pray for blessing. Let's pray for peace. Let's pray for healing. Pray and offer yourself to the Lord at this moment. with the intentions that are being offered, with all the intentions that are deep in our hearts, we bring them to Mary and ask Mary, our mother, the mother of peace, the mother of the church, to intercede for each one of us. Hail Mary, Mary full, full of, of grace, grace. The, Lord the Lord is with you. you. Blessed are you among women, women and, and blessed, blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Take my life, O Lord, and make it yours. Take my intellect and will Let your spirit be my guide and life Every moment of the day and night Oh, take my voice and let me sing your praise glory to you my god most high take my heart oh lord i give to you yours to freely Come and go Grant that I may live to love you more Every moment of my days and nights Oh, take myself and make me yours alone Jesus my Lord my God my own Pray brothers and sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name 
for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries, for whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is really right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed men in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder. To rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts Heaven and earth are full of your glory Hosanna in the highest Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord Hosanna in the highest Dear friends, brothers and sisters at this moment of grace as the bread and wine is being carried and offered to the Lord I ask you at this moment to offer your brokenness your anxieties, your worries your pain, your struggles, your unforgiveness, things that prevents us of becoming true disciples, whatever you are going through in your heart, at this moment, open your heart to the Lord and ask the Lord to bless you, to give you the grace and to give you the healing. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith We proclaim your death, O Lord And profess your resurrection Until you come again 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Sebastian, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father come, thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, bread and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the fate of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with mm -hmm. your spirit. Let us offer to each other the sign of peace. Saints of the world have mercy on us. Name of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Name of God, you take away the sins. Of the world, grant us peace, grant us peace. Dear friends, brothers, and sisters, this is Jesus who invites each one of us to come and see. This is Jesus, the Lamb of God, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ and the blood of Christ 
bring all of us to eternal life. Amen. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for Prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for Thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Our communion antiphon. We have come to know and to believe in the love that God has for us. Let us pray. Pour unto us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and one in heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends, brothers and sisters, as you know, the situation of this pandemic is not settled. Things are getting a little more worrying, a little more intense. Cases are going up. I just ask you, wherever you are, to take care of yourself, to be able to really protect yourself. The virus is everywhere. It's not just outside, but it's also inside. So let's pray for one another. Let's pray for our family, for our friends, that we will always be protected will be guided as we move and live our lives. Dear friends, we know that we have been disconnected in many ways. We only can keep in touch through telephone calls, WhatsApp messages. I invite you to continue with those little things that you can do. 
there are many people who are lonely. There are many people who do not have anyone to talk to. Maybe it's good on our part to be able to make a little phone call or send a little message of hope because this will definitely help in bringing Jesus to the heart of those who are struggling, the heart of those who are lonely, the hearts of those who feel unloved. So dear friends, we have also all the senior people, people who are staying at home. Please do not think you are left out. Each time the Mass is being celebrated, each time when the private Mass are being celebrated, all of you, including the senior citizens, people who are at home, are being prayed for. So dear friends, keep that praying together, be united in spirit, Always remember, as I say it always, whatever we are going through, whatever you are in, remember God truly loves you. He is with you as you journey and take steps as you move forward. Dear friends, just two announcements that i like to make. One is on the 31st of January, the last weekend of the month, our live stream mass will be at 8.30, at 8.30. It is just because if we go to some kind of normalcy in which if we can have our catechism classes online, so it will be just after Mass. So, dear friends, I ask you to take this, that our online Masses, our masses will not be at 9.30 from 31st, but from 31st onwards, our masses will be at 8.30 a.m., followed by catechism classes, because for one whole year, we have not got any constructive catechism classes, so we thought we could do something to move online and maybe to have one or two classes, if it permits, to come to the church to meet physically, especially classes like Confirmation and First Holy Communion. The teachers are all prepared with their SOPs and they are doing excellent work. I thank all the teachers who are preparing to make sure that the Catechism classes go on so that the fate of our children will continue. So dear friends, with that, take care of yourself. Happy Sunday. God bless you. Stay safe. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, the Mass is ended. Go in the peace and love of Christ. Thanks be to God. Ini ku rasa bahagia Berkumpul bersama saudara seiman Tuhan Yesus telah satukan kita Tanpa memandang di antara kita Dalam kasih, dalam satu hati Berjalan dalam terang kasih Tuhan Kau sahabatku, kau saudaraku Tiada yang dapat memisahkan kita Sahabatku, kau saudaraku, tiada yang dapat memisahkan kita. Tiada yang dapat memisahkan kita.